before I let this rifle go, I wanted to, to make a video talking about some of the finer build details, things that don't usually make their way onto my channel. Some of this may be a little risky, at least for me. Um, you don't always want to know how the sausages are made, right? You see the rifle working in the videos, it, it runs great and it looks cool. It's feeding from AK magazines and has all these cool features like a charging handle that you can use to lock the rifle open, stuff like that. But um, getting there was uh, definitely a process. So, yeah, trying to close the bolt when it's sitting on the table. Might slow it down. So when I got this rifle, it was um, definitely in a different shape. Attempted to have been made first. It was a it was, it was like bog standard type 56 carbine um, Chinese manufacturer nothing unusual about it stamped trigger group spike bayonet all that stuff but the previous owner of this rifle had been inspired by my builds to do his, his own version of a, a relocated trigger and pistol grip assembly on an SKS but he wanted to take it a step further he had some uh, he had some some machine tools and experience and he was able to mill out the um, mill out the um, the magazine well inside the receiver so that it would actually accept AK magazines um, and when he got out to the range what he discovered is that it, it didn't feed uh, quite as reliably as he was hoping for um, so he took it back to the shop and um, performed the uh, Uh, what's commonly called the um, the M4 um, feed ramp mod on the chamber, and you can if the camera will focus on it, which it might not. Um, you might be able to see that the in the bottom of the chamber is uh, milled away. So that's the chamber face. And obviously that can have some problems with these rifles because if you if you take away too much material on the chamber face, um, you're going to wind up leaving the the base of the cartridge unsupported, and you'll have um, you'll have uh, case failures, catastrophic detonations that just aren't real fun for anybody. So um, anyway, there were some uh, there were some issues with the. Uh, with the feed ramps, um, the way that the uh, the magazine well had been milled away wasn't quite sufficient to align uh, the feed lips on an AK style magazine with the chamber of an SKS. Because obviously the, the two rifles, though they feed from the same cartridge, are designed with two completely different feed paths, two different styles of bolt. Um, the SKS has a much steeper feed angle than the AK because the AK has to feed over uh, that has to push the cartridge kind of straighter in um, over top of the uh, the locking lugs for the bolt whereas the SKS the locking surface is behind the bolt and so there's no to clear the locking lugs the the tip of the bullet can be aligned like really close to the chamber the magazine basically lines the lines the bullet up so that the the tip of the bullet is pointing straight into the chamber, and if your feed your feed lips are lined up well, then the bolt just like pushes the the round straight into the chamber. It it never needs to hit the uh, um never needs to hit anything on its on its way. It should just feed straight in. Um, now, obviously, AK magazines um, their feed lips aren't designed for that for that type of feed angle. And so when you set up an, an AK mag to feed into an SKS, you have to give it a steeper angle than it's used to. Um, and you have to give it a steeper angle than the SKS magazine is set up for because SKS feed, feed lips have a, have a different feed angle um, with, with uh, like all the other geometries of the bullet relative to the, um, relative to the bore. So um, I had to... Without me, without uh, without a mill, basically just using um, 
carbide tipped uh, rotary tool bits, um, a steady hand, lots of patience. I had to um, I had to mill the the feed path um, further up. I had to fix some clearances for the um, I had to fix some clearances for the uh, the feed lifts of the AK magazines, and basically just move the entire thing higher up into the feed path. Um, along the way, of course, this this created this created one additional problem, which is that uh, AK magazines don't have a bolt hold bolt hold open, right? So, so if you if you push an AK mag too high into the the feed path. Um, be, without that bolt hold open to stop the bolt before it tries to feed another round out of a now empty magazine, um, the bolt's going to hit the back side of the, of the AK follower. So that was an issue. We had to make sure that we, we walked that really fine line between keeping the back end of the magazine down far enough that the, the bolt would still over travel the magazine on the last round. Um, but we also had to have it high enough in the feed path that we were... Um, that we were getting good consistent feeding out of these magazines. And um, key to that is uh, the way that I set up the, the front locking uh, lug for the magazines. So this is a really solid setup. There's, there's almost, I mean, there's a little bit of wiggle when you uh, actually get it locking, but there's not a whole lot of wiggle uh, in the front end. It's all mostly kind of in the back end. And that doesn't matter because we have, we have plenty of round, um, like the, sorry, we have like, Plenty of the uh, of the round head is available for the bolt to to strip out of the magazine uh, in the back side. Like we could have it sitting even lower, and they'd still feed just fine. Um, but uh, most importantly, is, is we have to have the nose of the magazine high enough that we're not getting those uh, tip strikes down in the um, the lower one third of the chamber mouth area. And so what this is is a a roll pin. Um, I, it's either it's either a um, the next grade down or the same diameter as um, the roll pins that I use to hold um, SKS specific magazines in my other builds um, that typically goes through the through the stock. Anyway, so what I've done here is, and again with this with this one it was a little bit different difficult because uh, originally there was a. Um, uh, there was just a, a steel block welded to the underside of, of the receiver right here, right beneath the, uh, the chamber mouth that was uh, then contoured to allow AK magazines to lock onto it. Um, the problem was that, uh, that that block obviously didn't extend up into uh, the magazine well area uh, higher than the bottom of the receiver. So the receiver, the, the block was just welded flat to the bottom of the receiver. So that was uh, that was where we were getting our, our incorrect feed angle from, and so this this roll pin is actually cut so that the um, the surface here that the magazines catch on um, sits higher than the uh, the the lower edge here of the receiver, which makes sure that our magazines are locked in at the correct angle. Um, I'm not sure if I'm doing a good job of being in frame or not. I'll try to fix that. Anyway. Um, so once I got the, uh, once I got the height on my, my locking surface on this pin proper relative, then I just drilled and tapped, um, the receiver at this spot, um, ran in some, uh, ran in some machine screws, um, torqued them down. And then basically because, because I, um, I didn't want to have to hog out too much material from the uh, from the magazine well um, of my of my stock, which I'll get to in a second. Um, I have uh, um, tapered off the outside edge of these screws, so it looks uh, it looks a little bit weird. Although maybe there's there's probably some people out there who've um, who have SKSs that have been modified to feed from. Uh, AK mags that have a very similar setup in their rifles because I stole the idea from a guy on uh, SKS boards who's done so successfully and it's um, it's working out really well obviously this uh, this tapered edge means that the uh, the stock and also the fact that I've um, infilled the the threaded area here with epoxy 
to uh, to keep these screws from walking off and they're they're torqued in there very tight this is a very secure locking surface obviously it would be a little more secure if i had been able to um machine this out and get some good proper tig welds on like a properly hardened piece of uh of key stock to put in there but uh for the for the purpose of of um getting a rifle that feeds reliably um it's uh it's working very well um and i have i have not had any feeding issues from where this uh this part of the of the modification holds the magazines uh whatsoever so i'm really quite happy with it and i expect that it's going to uh be about as durable as any other part of this build so there's that um right so that's basically it for magazine modifications as far as that goes um the let's see what is there anything else i did on the receiver um other than i guess we'll yeah we'll get to the we'll get to the the, the muzzle stuff like right at the end so then the next thing was uh the the fire control group so this fire control group was originally designed um fabricated as a typical example of my sk1517 system where it had a uh like a 1911 style grip frame that had scales on it or was going to have scales on it never actually got around to putting scales on it but that was basically the idea but um I got a, uh, I got a tactical pistol grip and I just, I wasn't really happy with, with having, um, an all, an all polymer, uh, stock and then having like a wooden grip scaled pistol grip. So I modified the, uh, modified the typical, uh, grip frame by cutting off the backside and, um, fitting this, uh, fitting this, this pistol grip to, um, what what is what is basically just a piece of steel tubing really the the same c continuation of this this piece that forms the um um magazine catch housing so one of the interesting things that that did for me um is it moved my pistol grip slightly farther forward than is typical for an SK1517 to where my my safety once i fabricated it is actually like just outside the back of the um like the the back swell of the the grip where your the web of your thumb goes so that that required some um adjustments to the grip i mean you can see that i have to have uh material relieves so that the the safety will flip back and forth there um the back end of it's wide open um it's it's a little atypical for an sk1517 grip to have the the whole of the um, the uh, fire control group catch on this uh, back tang of the receiver exposed, but obviously um, it's uh, it's not an issue. I have the tension adjusted on this so that it uh, holds the um, holds the, the trigger group very securely to the um, uh, to the receiver even when the, the the safety the safety is on so safety on is potentially fire control group uh release that's how these work uh, so that's safety on that's um the rifle's on fire now um again typical for a sk1517 um although ultimately uh I had to, to mill out some extra area in here for the um, magazine catch on the AK mags, which the, the catch on an AK mag sits a lot higher um, relative to the rest of the components than uh, the, the catch of an SKS magazine does. So these, uh, this pin here is uh, cut out, cut through, and the pin is welded in place over here. And of course, because that no longer holds the pin uh, typically holds the um this this uh sear stop so 
I have to, um, I have a, I have a screw keeping the, the sear stop from going out. Um, I was able to, uh, contour the trigger in a way that I, uh, really like. Um, I like, I like having a nice contour trigger, but this is still just a, um, this is still just a piece of, uh, piece of steel tubing that pushes on the trigger. You can see the whole thing going back inside the, um, back inside the grip frame there. Again, that's, that's the original trigger there. I, I haven't modified it at all. The only modification is just having this uh, single piece bar pushing on it. The weight, very nice. Of course, everything's smoothed out and, uh, you know, oiled. It runs really nicely, but that's basically it for the um, trigger group modifications where it, it differs markedly from um, a typical SK-1517. Um, so I, I think that's all about that. Um, the bolt, the bolt, uh, I didn't actually, I've never actually done anything to this bolt. It was, uh, it was milled by the original owner who, um, it, the mill work he did was very clean, much cleaner than any of the grinding that I've done. Um, so that was that. Um, so then moving on to, uh, charging handle. So gas tube cover, um, I might as well fall out. That's fine. So the charging handle guide is a piece of half inch tubing and it's, uh, it's welded into slots on this, um, on the, uh, the rear, um, upper hand guard or gas tube cover for rule. Um, but it can be disassembled actually, cause it's, the front is secured by a, um, a, a machine screw that goes through into a bolt in the back. Um, so this can be disassembled for whatever reason, although typically there's really no need to because you, you can, you can take it out, um, over top of the, uh, the site. You just kind of pull it back to the point where this this dog leg clears the site, and then you're good. Um, but the main thing, of course, was um, you've got a you've got a tilting bolt rifle. So when the rifle is in battery, the bolt actually drops down even farther than it typically is, um, which makes it fairly difficult to um, to load our Canadian pinned magazines. Typically the, the five rounds that are, they're pinned to is like exactly five with, you know, very little clearance. And so to, for the, uh, for the magazine spring to compress far enough that you can load them against the, again, like, like situated lower in the feed path SKS bolt. Um, they have to compress farther than, uh, the distance that would allow you to install a, um, a sixth round. So kind of by necessity, you have to fi either find some way to, um, to load them with the bolt open, or you have to alter the, uh, you have to alter the feed path of your magazine sufficiently that, uh, you can get them in with a closed bolt and then hopefully still be able to strip around. But there's really no reason to, to make the feed angle of an AK mag even steeper than it absolutely has to be. So I wanted to have something that still had like some extra functionality, right? Like that's the, the whole SK-1517 idea is that we want this thing to have more capability than just an SKS that's been put into a different stock. We want it to have more, uh, more control features than whatever rifle somebody tries to claim that you really want and you've just made your SKS uh, look cool. Um, so eventually I hit upon the idea of doing something kind of like what the, the Germans did with the G3, where they have a, they have a, a non-reciprocating charging handle that can be rotated up into a bolt hold open slot. So this, this charging handle, it's fabricated from a single piece of, um, I think quarter inch rod. Um, I just had it lying around. So I don't, I've never measured the diameter, so I didn't buy it. I don't know what size it is. I literally just pulled it out of my stack of metal, 
which is unfortunately a lot smaller than it used to be um, due to circumstances. Anyway, the uh, the back end, um, you able to see this. This um, this slot, it isn't a straight slot. It's kind of milled on an angle. Um, and the two the two bits that are are whole and extend all the way to the end are at about a about a forty five to each other relative to the um, to the receiver. Um, and the reason for that is that when it when it rotates, it still has to engage with the notches on the uh, on the front of the bolt. So we want to we want to try to keep the um, the bolt from being able to uh, let's see, make sure I'm getting the frame. Oops. We want to try to make sure that we can we can keep the bolt from being able to skip past the the rod and you know jam the whole gun. So because um, the one thing about this is that unlike with the uh, the SK15, this is the charging handle is the bolt hold open, and so it has to maintain positive control of the bolt all the time. Um, which it it does a really good job of, and the other cool thing is that when the like when you when you pull this back and you release it, um, having this having this this beveled surface makes sure that it maintains its best positive contact with the bolt in the down position. So there's there's no danger that if you just run the bolt and release it, that it's going to accidentally catch in this notch because it's going to be held in a a strictly horizontal surface where the uh, the guide slots cut into the uh, the charging handle will just run inside the charging handle guide. So that's how I fabricated that and uh, my thought process behind it and it's worked out really well so far. Um, two more things. So uh, I've I've cut the barrel down to the minimum um, non-restricted uh, length that is uh, required by Canadian law, which is, um, it's, it's in the neighborhood of 18 and a half inches. I mean, it's the, the statute is written in, uh, in metric, but it's, it's 18 and a half inches. So this is like 18 and three quarters inches or something, just to make sure that I've got a little bit of play in case uh, anybody ever measures the barrel and tries to decide if I've um, chopped it down too far and created a prohibited device, which uh, incidentally, the OPP had a chance to measure it and they decided that it was not, so that's all, all good. Now, after I got the rifle back from the OPP, um, I was able to, uh, um, like I, I crowned the barrel and I threaded it for this muzzle device which is from a VZ58 um, pattern. So it's uh, M14 by one right hand. And then um, just to, to further help with the weight distribution, I um, modified the front sight by basically spreading the bottom open, uh, welding a piece on to keep it at that dimension, pushing it back. And then of course I um, aligned it again with the, uh, with the sights and uh, reamed out the hole for the pin, push the pin back in. Um, so this is a very solid front sight, as solid as the original is. Um, and, uh, but finally, and this is kind of a mea culpa, is uh, I, I don't own any other firearms that feed from AK magazines. And so when I got the AK magazines, when I got this rifle, it came with one AK mag which is this Chinese smoothback um, Type 56 uh, rifle magazine. And um, then I got a couple of these, uh, I guess they're, they're called Croatian magazines. I guess they're made in Croatia. Um, and their claim to fame is that their, uh, their, um, their follower sticks far up enough in the feed path that the bolt will jam on it. Um, when you fired the last round, which it is like, I suppose it's kind of a feature because you never accidentally dry fire the gun while you're shooting, but it's also super annoying um, because I have a bolt hole open charging handle. So I really don't need that feature. So I actually, I've actually installed um, a block inside the feed lip there that uh, 
keeps the fault lower from riding all the way up to the underside of the feed lips. And so I've intentionally deleted the bolt hole open feature because I don't actually have a receiver mounted bolt hole open. So just locking my bolt halfway open is kind of a waste of time because um, this charging handle holds the bolt almost all the way to the back of the bolt's uh, length of travel. Um, so again, um, not having, uh, not having any other AK magazines and looking at the way that my magazines were interacting with my, um, uh, my fire control group and my receiver, I incorrectly assumed that the bottom of this, uh, this buttress that's welded onto this, uh, this plate that goes on the backside of these steel magazines was the locking surface. And so on the magazines that I fitted to this rifle, I ground off the actual locking surface and optimized the system to lock on the, uh, <laughs> the bottom of this buttress. And I've since had a chance to, um, review my decision. And I've realized that, um, it's, uh, an error. Um, so this system will only work with, uh, magazines that have the ability to be modified so that you can engage this as the locking surface and not the actual locking tab, which apparently sits a lot higher up here. Um, and that was basically just my lack of familiarity with the platform. Um, other than that though, these Croatian magazines, uh, other than of course being made from very solid steel and, um, they don't really have any feeding issues, but man, they had a lot of fitment issues. Just, the um, the quality is, is significantly poorer than the Chinese magazine. That's for sure. Using, using this surface as the locking surface is really positive. Um, the magazines, again, they lock very securely. Um, but obviously if you were going to attempt to, um, modify other AK magazines for the system, um, you would have to, uh, <laughs> you would have to file off your locking surface and then those magazines would only be, uh, available to this, uh, to this rifle and you wouldn't be able to interchange them with your other AK magazines. On the other hand, if this is going to be the only AK magazine rifle you own, you could definitely just make sure that you mostly run steel magazines where you have the ability to access this, uh, this thickness in the back and use that as the magazine catch. So, um, if I was doing this again, I would, I would definitely, um, try to set it up so that you could use any AK magazine that has the locking tab in the right spot. But again, the cool thing about, uh, about guns is that, um, their, their function is really just an engineering problem. And so if you can, uh, um, if you can make it work, then it works. Um, obviously it's, uh, a consideration that I, I wish I had uh, spent more time on at the, at the time, but on the other hand, it does work. And so finally, uh, we come down to the stock. Um, and so the stock was always going to be an issue because I, uh, I, the original stock for this rifle, um, was, uh, not included with it. What I got was a, um, a rifle that had had a, a sort of, um, approximation of an AK receiver welded to the sides of it. Um, removing that welded on material and, and getting the rifle back to more or less original contours, um, was, was definitely an issue. Um, the other thing was I didn't have a stock for it. I had, I had purchased a stock and had already set it up and it, uh, it burned up with my workshop. So I had to start all over again. And, um, one of the first things I did though, was I found a Magpul style Zhukov stock folding stock for an AK. Um, and, um, having had some success in fitting folding stocks to, um, polymer SKS chassis in the, in the past, I had to go out and find a, 
uh, polymer stock. Now, typically I would have probably just gone like right out of the gate with a Tapco stock, but in the interim, Tapco went out of business. And so Tapco stocks have become very dear. Um, so cheaper than that, I was able to find one of those Dragunov style ATI stocks, uh, Fiber Force, I think they're called. Um, now, obviously, I had no requirement whatsoever for a Dragunov style stock. And so I just chopped the, um, I chopped the, the thumb hole style stock right off, uh, um, milled out this back area, cut the, cut the, the, the AK interface part of the stock down, made them together, bolted them together. That's the head of the screw there that I used and, um, finished it all off by, uh, solidifying it up with epoxy, which has since been painted over. So it's a very solid stock. Um, the, the downward comb is because, um, having the stock, um, in this location with a straight back extension, um, puts your, puts your face pretty high for the iron sights. And I wanted to have, uh, the ability to use the original irons without, you know, a really high cheek weld. So it's got kind of a downward comb, which, uh, creates an issue where when the stock is folded, it actually, the back end of the buttstock sits higher than the charging handle of the bolt. So if you fire this rifle with a stock folded, you have at best a single shot. And if you have the stock folded, you can't run the charging handle. You can't reload the rifle or anything. You have to have the stock open basically for it to work. And that was again, um, an oversight, um, kind of a, a case of me operating a little bit out of my, um, typical area of expertise. Um, the area where I'm reasonably comfortable and have an idea of what the pitfalls are. But, uh, as far as the stock goes, um, I think it looks great. Um, this, uh, this front part of the stock, the, uh, original ATI stock actually has a part that sits up higher, sort of hides the gas tube and has another layer of holes kind of to make it look more like a Dragunov uh, stock, I guess, SVD stock. But, uh, obviously had to cut it off cause, um, you know, I need to have the charging handle running in place. So that's where that came in. Um, and that's, uh, that's basically been my, uh, my, um, my design process, my, um, modification process with this rifle. Um, and, uh, at the end of the day, it's produced a really nice, really svelte little rifle that has all of the stuff that makes the SKS so great, you know, uh, reliability, um, ease of, of teardown. And, uh, you know, simplicity, just like with any, any other SKS, you can still basically just take the whole thing apart with the tip of a bullet. Hence my demonstration with my snap cap here. Um, you know, and it, it feeds from what are arguably some of the most common, um, magazines in the world. Um, magazines that have and, uh, but you know, still breaks down like an SKS, reassembles like an SKS, but uh, it's very much its own animal. And uh, I mean, yeah, the, the weight and balance of this gun is just 
amazing. Um, I think I think some of it is just that it's uh, it's a little bit simpler. You know the um, the charging handle adds a bit of weight, but cutting down the barrel and uh, moving the sight back negates a lot of that. And then um, not having uh, the bolt hold open assembly here in the receiver, having milled out more of the receiver to accommodate the magazines, really um, lightens the receiver up a lot. And then this all all polymer furniture just makes for a rifle that's really lightweight. And uh, I I love um, I've loved having it to play with. I'm gonna be sorry to see it go, but uh, uh, this build has been a lot of fun. Um, Again, also a lot of hassle. Uh, milling, milling the receiver is um, a lot of work that I'm, I'm not sure I want to get into doing all the time. So this might be, this might be the only one that I ever do on this pattern. But uh, I've had a, a bunch of people interested in uh, the charging handle for um, their own AK mag-fed rifles. So you might see some more on this pattern out there. Anyway. Time to end this video.